Okay, I'm not going to tell you any more shipping stories. That's good. <laughs> now, the reason, um, I'm going to back up and give a little bit of history of this. Uh, we, we retired, or I retired from the oil industry in 1990 after a long time and very lucrative and successful career. But I wanted to do something that involved service and a business that would I could have for five, about five years and build it and sell it. 25 years later, still here. <laughs> Excited to be here. Look forward to every Monday. But the process uh, of a mail center back then was uh, very busy, a lot of activity there. But uh, I found that I wanted to do it because of the service end of it. But I found that most of the people doing it, and still today, just stand there behind the counter, wait for that next person to come in. Now, those that know me pretty well know that I don't stand behind the counter very well. <laughs> and I really enjoy getting out and mixing with people and bringing people into my business. But I found that most of the business was uh, shipping. About 60, 65% of our business is shipping back then. But over the years, and people would just stand there waiting for that shipping stuff to come in. And I even took that further because I love to create things and build things. So the packing and the freight end of it was a very big attraction for me. But right in the beginning, I knew that our business was not shipping, was not packing, was not creating. The business was supplying services to those out there that had businesses of their own. Shelly does photography quite well, but she doesn't need to screw with all that daily stuff for a business that she doesn't need to screw with. That's where we come in. Dennis, the same thing. Mark, everyone out there that has a business of their own do not need to screw with the basic day-to-day -day things that we do. Shipping, whether it's printing, all of those different things. And we have 35 different categories to look for in that. And right away, we started with printing. And the printing was a big part of our business from the beginning, but has shifted the percentages to more of that than it is shipping because of the advent of the, the free shipping, the drop-offs, Amazon's uh, same-day delivery. All these things out there have eroded my shipping business considerably. And as you've seen maybe in the lack of tips pass, which I understand and appreciate. So we've done printing for the whole 25 years. And I looked at printing differently because I knew I didn't have a lot of equipment, which was OK. Uh, in the beginning, it was OK because I would go and have something uh, foil stamped, you know, a little bit of gold or silver foil or colored foil on something. I'd have something foil stamped. And I'd find I'd go to a printer, and they'd say, um, let's see here. I think it's best to be using green foil, because he's got a bunch of green foil. And I found that all the time. But I found a company in West Texas, that's all they do is foil stamp. I could get any color I want, get it done cheaply in West Texas, even including the shipping back here, and give you a process of foil stamping back then was about $80 for a business card to get somebody foil stamped. West Texas charged me 20 bucks for it. So I found all these things. Everywhere I looked, I could find someone like that. The printers that I went to, as good as they were, and by the way, uh, we've had I think five printers in this group since I've been part of it, six printers in this group since I've been part of it. One of the ones back in the 90s I brought in, uh, Coastal Press, uh, Frank's printing back then, uh, Frank Archuleta, you may, a lot of you might remember him, a printer's printer. Uh, by the way, all the printers that I usually go to are trade printers. They're not, commer they're not resident or retail printers for you, they're just trade printers for the industry, which saves a ton of money. But Frank was the biggest. Frank was all the jobs out there in Orange County were coming to him anyway. So he wanted to come in here and experience things. And unfortunately, his, his uh, son passed away, and he moved away from our group. But those are the kind of people I dealt with. But even then, I look at it, and there, Frank has, I think, 15,000 square feet over in Susan Drive right now. But even that, they're still limited on the equipment they could have, limited to what they could provide you, and they would still cater to what they had versus what you needed. That's why I developed a full network of this. And about seven years ago, I added my own equipment to make sure that I can meet all your needs and make sure I can find that thing, not to, to cater the job to what I have, but to cater the job to what you need. Now, I brought a couple examples. I went back to the store this morning because so I didn't really know what to, to show you. This is probably the biggest, this is the holy grail, by the way, of, of sports books in Orange County, Edison's football program is so much, they have so much money, and they just spend it. This, this job is a roughly $10,000 job for me. And what it is, is they print these books. Most sports programs will print one book for the season. They print one book for each game, wow. which is good for me. The ch for each game, 
So I'm going to pass these around so you can see what I'm talking about. This book, uh, I don't farm this out. This book is totally done in-house. I do every part of this book, even to the face trimming and, and the binding of the book, in-house. And the reason I'm saying that is this isn't farmed out and because it has to be that way. They bring me these books, and I do literally thousands of them a season. I'll start again in August. Already have the job. I do thousands of them a season, but the problem is they bring me the book on Monday, all the information, for the Friday game. And there's no printer out there that would accept that. Most printers would want to gang this up and do all thousand of the common pages beforehand and then add in the other pages later on. But they can't do that because they change things without the rest of the book that they, over the years, they've accepted that because they know all the printers that have bid the job will bid a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of them printed at once and then just add in the filler pages. They didn't want that. But the other reason it makes a difference, I haven't found any printer out there, including all the ones I've ever used, that makes a difference is I know the market here. You're all parents, most of your parents. What's the most important thing about that book? Your kid's your photo. Kids. Your kid's photo. Your kid. Don't look through the book until they find their kid. It better be clear and sharp. So I make sure, and, and the staff I have, because I've got, I added a person yesterday, we have 10 now. I added to make sure that the staff looks through that book and make sure every kid's picture is good and, pick, and sharp. And that's the only thing that they, I mean, last year, this past fall, as the season progressed, they ended up selling more and more books each week because everyone loved the book so much. And they've never done that in the past. So they're really happy having me and they're really happy having me again this season. So we got the job again, starting August, which is really good. Um, a lot of flexibility in the things I do. Here's another reason. This last minute thing is a kind of a dubious achievement because I had a, a client uh, ask me to do their uh, a, a banquet, a program for their banquet. It was a Friday, they called me about five o'clock and I said, well, when's the banquet? And they said, well, we're walking in now. <laughs> and uh, I, I said, can you, can you tell some jokes or something and give me some information? So they sent someone over and I put together something and about an hour and a half, I presented the program to the, the head of the banquet thing, kind of on the side here, totally seamless to the whole crowd. They didn't have any idea. They didn't have a program until they had a program. So that was kind of cool, but uh, it is a, you know, so people count on that too much. <laughs> Actually, that one wasn't. Uh, this one, for instance, uh, these, we did 10,000 of these. Uh, these uh, flyers for, these are EDDM flyers for uh, cleaners down in Huntington Beach. They have another one in Bolsa Chica we just did. But the reason I, I point this out, this had to be done in-house too because she only wants about uh, two carrier routes at a time, which is about 600 people at a time, and then she'll do those about every other week. So I don't, there's not enough to send it out, so I have to do it in-house. So there's kind of things like that. Um, crab cooker is another thing. 50,000 of these go out. But the problem with that is he doesn't, he pass, have you ever been to the crab cooker down in Newport? Mm -hmm. Great restaurant. But uh, Steve will give me these, and he'll go, can you give me another 600 of those, or 1,000 of those? And he'll, he'll, he's ordering 50,000, but he does them that quickly. He doesn't really mail them, he just passes them out. Uh, this one here, I made a quick copy from my phone, or a quick picture of my phone yesterday when I delivered it. This banner is on an aluminum frame. Uh, it's uh, six by, seven, almost seven by three on this frame, two-sided, for a, a therapy business down there in uh, South Huntington Beach. He ordered it Monday. He needed it for a deal today, so we got it yesterday afternoon. So I, I talk about this last minute stuff. But I'd rather you wouldn't think of me that way. <laughs> but, uh, but I do, I, I do everything out there in printing. I did uh, all the electric signs for a shopping center up in Southgate, all the outside businesses for that. I do a lot of banners, a lot of big things. You know, I know people out there that can do this stuff. Do you realize there's a business in North Huntington Beach that has the largest printer in the world? Uh, it's up there by Gothard and uh, by Boeing. The, the business is, uh, the printer is, does each pass through is 16 feet wide. They have a seam, a seam uh, deal that will seam it together that is even bigger than that. Uh, the facility is over, over, over an acre. Uh, there's another business on Gothard uh, by Enger that is number one in the, in the world for, uh, for 3D printing. They testify in front of the Congress all the time about the process of 3D printing. Massive 3D printing. It's a company called All Clip. They make the, the things for your iPhones and other phones, the, uh, the lenses. They're up there on Gothic. Anyway, I do it all, all the printing out there, anything possible. 
and I've done it for many, many years and just love it. So, and that's why it's part of my business. Any questions, quickly? Questions. Shut up. Hi, Sherry. Pardon me? I have digital presses. I have production equipment. Each one of them costs more than a car. And uh, that's why I can do that inside. Um, the other things, I have binding equipment. But binding is interesting, too. There's the, the biggest binder in Orange County is BJ Bindery. Or, I think it's Irvine. And they'll charge uh, for a perfect bind. Perfect bind is when you bind a glue bind like a book. When you get over 76 or 80 pages in a book, you want a perfect bind it because of the thickness. You don't want to stitch it like those are. When you get to that, you usually use them. Most people use them. They're not trade, but they're typically trade. But they'll charge about two bucks for that binding. Where there's another binder in Santa Ana that will charge me 80 cents for that binding. So, and he does even a better job than BJ. So I find him out there. But, so I don't need that. I can bind things like this in-house and trim it for the small runs, but I might as well send it to them for the big runs. Quick question. Yes, sir. Can you do uh, uh, perf posters? Perf posters? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we, one thing we don't do, and I do this on purpose, we don't do the uh, prescription forms, the prescription pads. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you have, to have a, you have to have a license to do that. Because you'll have people like Ron would be uh, buying all those prescription forms so you can sell them on the street. I thought you could hook me up, man. I got some in the car. No, I can't. Hang on, where's that? So I don't do prescription forms. Yeah. Right. Anything else? That's it? I know. <laughs> well, thank you, and thank, and thank you for your support. I appreciate it.